Tourism in Bali needs to change and develop, according to the governor and the minister of tourism. And the governor says condition of tourism in Bali is not good. Why did he say that? Stay tuned and find out. And going green, Bali governor inaugurates solar power plant on the Bali Mandara toll road. Find out how that is going too. Coming up, along with more stories. Welcome back to the latest news from Bali and Indonesia. This is September 23rd. 2022 and my name is Bruce and what is the weather like today it is another hot day 32 degrees right now in Singaraja humidity 64 percent wind speed 14.3 kilometers per hour and a little hazy but overall beautiful and I hope wherever you are it is a beautiful day as well it is Friday and the weekend is coming up some good news on the COVID front let's take a look at the numbers national new cases 2,162 national recoveries 4,051 national deaths 18 Bali new cases 22 Bali recoveries 23 and deaths in Bali one so good news numbers are down a little bit the numbers in Bali, right, still way below 50, so that is good news. And what about the positivity rate for testing? Weekly rate still the same, of course, 7.80. The daily positivity rate has gone down just a bit. It is 6.31. So for people that are coming here and asking me, should I worry about COVID? Most people here are not, so take that as you may. A lot of stuff to do as usual. It's Friday, lots of things, and let's get started. San Diego Uno, it's time to focus on sustainable tourism. Yes, the Minister of Tourism always has something to say. He said it is time for Indonesia to implement community-based, sustainable, inclusive tourism that has a major, major impact on job creation. He said Indonesia is no longer pursuing number of tourist visits but rather is focused on encouraging sustainable tourism. Interesting comment, considering that news stories, there is always something about the numbers. We are getting 10,000 a day in this and 14,000 a day in that. And the numbers, oh, visiting uh, Lake Baratan have gone up and blah, blah, blah. But the minister says we're not going to focus on that anymore. We're going to be focused on sustainable tourism. Okay, so that's a good idea. Quality and competitive human resources are necessary to achieve sustainable tourism in Medan. So he was in Medan when he was talking about this. He said so that they can support Lake Toba. And Lake Toba is one of the five priority super destinations in Indonesia. This is part of the get away from just going to Bali and take a look at the rest of the country and see what's for offer. The minister said Indonesia is a global reference on how to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic and the revival of the tourism sector, which is evident from the implementation of World Tourism Day on September 28th, 2022, which will be held in Bali. So just a few days away, like San Diego said, we've managed to jump 12 places in the TTCI, Travel and Tourism Competitiveness Index, surpassing Malaysia, Thailand, and Vietnam for the first time. Our awakening, he said, is no longer from numbers, but from community-based, sustainable, inclusive human resources that have a direct impact on job creation. Definitely, let's create jobs. So the Minister of Tourism is definitely optimistic about tourism in Bali. And what about the governor? Bring Bali tourism upgrade and competitive. The governor of Bali emphasized that he's currently working hard to bring Balinese tourism to compete with Singapore, Malaysia, Bangkok, and even Europe through monumental and fundamental infrastructure development. And this has been his big thing here. He said, this is so the results of tourism in Bali are able to provide economic benefit for farmers, fishermen, craftsmen, and to Balinese in general by facilitating the, the use of local Balinese agricultural, fishery, and industrial products by the hotels and restaurants on the island of the gods. However, the governor said that Bali tourism is currently not in a good condition. Why not? He said there's problems experienced by Balinese tourism, such as the bad behavior of tourists 
who harass holy places and the behavior of tourists who did not respect Bangladesh culture, traffic disorder, damaging the environment, and breaking into ATMs. Okay, mm somebody has irritated the governor. Too many boules behaving badly? We got locals behaving badly as well, and there's a story coming up on that, a couple of them today. Governor Koster also described conditions that have worsened the image of Bali by showing photos of piles of garbage on the coast and the presence of hawkers who force tourists to shop. From the tourism problems described, Koster said Bali does not have adequate readiness to become a world-class and competitive tourist destination. For this reason, during his leadership era, the Bali province PDIP immediately has stepped on the gas by organizing Balinese tourism. And how has he done this? Well, there is a whole list that he gave here in his little talk. Bali Governor Regulation Number 97 concerning restrictions on generation of single-use plastic waste, number one. Number two, Bali Governor Regulation Number 99 of 2018 concerning marketing and utilization of Bali's local agricultural, fishery, and industrial products. Bali Governor Regulation Number 47 of 2019 concerning source-based waste management. Bali Provincial Regulation Number 4 of 2019 consider, concerning traditional villages in Bali. Number 5, Bali Provincial Regulation Number 4 of 2020 concerning strengthening and promoting Balinese culture. Number 6, Bali Provincial Regulation Number 5 of 2020 concerning standards for the implementation of Bali cultural tourism, blah, blah, blah. After issuing all these policies, the governor then started developing and building monumental and fundamental infrastructure to support tourism and revive the Balinese economy, including protecting Basaki, creating the Bali Cultural Center area, the Singaraja Mengatawi shortcut, the ports at Sanur, Sampalan, and BS Munyu, Bali Tourism Hub in Dempasar, the Captain EYN Dipta Stadium, Sidan Dam in Badung, Tomblong Dam in Bulalain, power generation towards energy independent Bali with clean energy, the Turiapada Tower, construction of the Gilimanuk Mengui Toll Road. So not only is he building infrastructure, but also helping to synergize tourism development with food security in Bali by facilitating agricultural products purchased directly by hotels and restaurants. So they're supposed to be buying local. Currently, he said hotels that use rice, eggs, salt, fish, meat, oranges, mangosteen, salak, vegetables, and Balinese wine include the Marriott Group and the Kempinski Group. He also emphasized that every hotel restaurant in Bali is now required to place Balinese script. And every Tuesday, they have to wear Balinese and deck clothing. And at Pernama, hotel employees are required to wear traditional Balinese clothing. The governor stated that his tourism and food security policies are aimed at strengthening Balinese customs, traditions, cultural arts, and local wisdom, so as to realize a prosperous and happy Balinese life on a scale of no basis. And he emphasizes his policy is to be able to recover together, grow together, live together, develop together, be strong together, benefit together. The governor concluded by saying our task is how to protect nature, people, and Balinese culture so that they are sustainable and passed down from generation to generation throughout the ages. Now let's take a look at going green because there's been a lot of talk nationally from the president and locally from the governor about Indonesia and Bali going green. PLTS 400 KWP on Bali Mandara Toll Road inaugurated. The governor of Bali inaugurated a solar power plant, PLTS, that's the solar power plants, that's what they're called, and it has a maximum capacity of 400 kilowatt peak. The inauguration was carried out the other day on the Bali Mandara Toll Road. The PLTS Bali Mandara Toll Road is one of the first clean energy transitions to be built in Indonesia and is in accordance with the vision of Bali's regional development in order to create a clean Bali natural ecosystem. And some more on going green in Bali. And electric vehicles, right? I've been talking a lot about electric vehicles. Everybody's pushing electric vehicles. The president and the governor of Bali. Well, here's another one for the governor of Bali. Bali Governor Wayne Koster 
attends Bali DPRD plenary meeting using an electric car. And there's a picture of him in his electric car. To overcome congestion and air pollution, Bali's governor said that it's necessary to transform from fossil fuel use to renewable energy vehicles, namely gas and electricity, in particular transforming to battery-based electric vehicles. The use of electric vehicles has now become a national policy because the president of Indonesia issued presidential instruction number seven of 2022 concerning use of battery-based electric motorized vehicles. Especially in Bali, the use of electric vehicles is currently running. Even the Bali Provincial Government Institute issued instructions for the use of electric vehicles for employees of the government and it also has issued a circular from the governor to use solar power plants in public areas. And I've talked about a long time ago about the government buying electric motorbikes for use by government employees. And so this is being expanded. And now they're talking about getting electric cars as well. In terms of solar power plants, the governor said, the main requirement was that we install it on the Bali Mandara toll road in the framework of G20. I asked the president director of SOEs to build a solar power plant along the Bali Mandara toll road as a marker for the start of the use of PLTS in the Bali province as the implementation of the governor regulation number 45 of 2019 concerning Bali and clean energy. We are going to do this in the future, he said. The governor said he's been using an electric vehicle since the beginning of the year, and according to him, it's very comfortable to use. He said it's convenient and it costs half the operating cost of a fossil fuel using vehicle. He said if you use gasoline, it costs you 100,000, but only 20,000 if you use an electric vehicle. And so the use of electric vehicles has been instructed to regents and mayors throughout Bali. And so if you see electric vehicles wandering around with government plates on them, you can thank the governor. And what about flying? We're talking about tourism. Air Asia opens new routes in Indonesia vows to be bigger than pre-COVID-19. Okay, good news. If there's a lot more flights, hopefully the price will come down. Low-cost carrier Indonesia Air Asia plans to enlarge its operation so that it will be bigger than the pre-pandemic period. And this should all happen by the end of the year. Another three months. According to the CEO, we all know Indonesia for Bali Pak President is keen to develop tourism and Indonesia has so much more to offer than just Bali. And I've said that many times. Indonesia Air Asia operates single aisle Airbus 320-200 aircraft for domestic and international routes. The PT Indonesia Air Asia CEO said before COVID-19 pandemic, we operated 26 aircraft. By the end of this year, we are expecting to operate 28 to 30 aircraft and we will add more in 2023. Recently, Indonesia Air Asia opened three new routes that did not exist before the pandemic. The Bali Balikpapan route, the Bali Medan route, and the Jakarta Selangat route. The CEO added that the opening of new routes was expected to give the domestic economy a leg up. The CEO concluded in line with the government, our mission is to equalize the economy by creating connectivity to areas that were not served much before. And Indonesia Air Asia also recently resumed flights on international routes such as Bangkok, KL, Singapore, and Penang from several cities in Indonesia. Ah, okay, so we can fly internationally on Indonesia Air Asia now. And some more on tourism. This is interesting because I used to stop at the airport in Ambon a lot when I was living in Papua we would go from Tamika to Biak to Ambon to Makassar and then finally to Bali. And so I spent a lot of time transiting in Ambon and that airport back in those days, and this was a long time ago, 20 to 33 years ago, it was nothing. It was just a couple of rooms. Uh, there was really nothing there, nothing to do, nothing to eat really. It was clean. That's the best I can say for it. The bathrooms were really clean compared to Makassar and they were filthy there. Well, Ambon Padimora International, among best airports in Asia Pacific, good for them. The Padimora International Airport in Ambon, Maluku, was named one of the best airports in Asia Pacific 
by the Airport Council International World Annual Airport Service Quality Award for 2021. Padimora won in the size category of under 2 million passengers a year. And as I've often said, if you have never been to Maluku's, you need to go to the Maluku's. Uh, it is amazing. A lot less tourists, so you get to move around a lot more. Beautiful waters, very clear crystal. Ah, nice sandy beaches, lovely people. Strongly recommend that. And I still want to go there, and I am hoping, hoping, hoping to go there sometime in the next year. The award is a form of international recognition for commitment to excellent service at airports around the world, according to the general manager of Padimura Airport. In total, six airports in Indonesia were named winners of ASQ awards in 2021. In the two to five million passenger per year category, there was Samarang's General Amidiani uh, Airport and Surakarta's Airport also. In the five to 15 million passengers per year, there was the Hassanuddin uh, Airport in Makassar and Jogja's Airport and Sapingan's International Airport. So good news for airports. Anybody been in the airport in Ambon recently? Leave a comment. I'd love to know. And if you got photos, wow, it'd be nice to see a photo. I don't know how you can upload photos, so I guess not. Here's an update on the Indonesian lovebirds who were doing the nasty in their car while driving dressed in traditional Balinese clothes. Revealed, actor in a nasty video in a student's car, the video is intentionally spread to the group. So the two people involved have been busted. Yes, they were arrested. The young lady was arrested in Jakarta and the young man was arrested here in Dempasar. The couple were not married, they weren't even dating. They were just having fun. They were friends. They met, apparently, according to news sources, on Twitter, and a group on Twitter where I guess they sh share sexual experiences to excite themselves. So she is a university student studying in Jakarta. And the, the young man is from Sesetan in Dempasar. And they were just doing this to have fun. They only do, do it for sexual fantasies, according to a police source. Videos of the sex scene were then distributed to a special group whose contents are people who have a sexual orientation like them. I guess they like doing it in public and then making videos of it. The police said the video is not for sale. It was just for the group, but someone released it. And interestingly enough, this happened right after they had gone through some purification ritual bath in Malukat. <laughs> and so they had their traditional clothing on. And well, that's one of the things that really irritated people. So the two lovebirds are looking at the possibility of a long stretch in prison for violating Indonesia's electronics law and the pornography law and a huge fine of up to 6 billion rupiah. And according to reports, the couple are sorry that they did this. It's going to be a little late, unfortunately, for them. And here's just a little thing that I saw that was, well, Pak Sandiago Uno gets involved in everything. And it made some trouble for this young lady. Minister Sandiago Uno condemns catcalling in tourism spots. The Tourism and Creative Economy Minister Pak Sandiago Uno made a statement responding to the ongoing issue of catcalling in popular tourism areas. He asserted that verbal sexual harassment is more than just a nuisance for tourists. Catcalling, he said, is a malicious act against tourists or anyone in general. It usually happens to the opposite sex. For example, in one area, someone is greeted with whistles or words such as, Hi, beautiful. Do you want to be escorted? Or asking for their WhatsApp number. And so it's annoying, he said. Pak Sandiaga's statement was directed to a specific incident that happened to a tourist who was visiting Gili Trawangan, and she uploaded a video complaining about catcalling. The video is now gone. I went and took a look at her TikTok page, and there was a very long apology from her to the people of Gili Trawangan, the people of Lombok, the government. And she said it was meant to be a private video. And she is sorry for all of the fuss. Sandiaga specifically blamed catcalling for tarnishing the reputation and image of Indonesia's tourism, which he believes should be known for its hospitality. Sandiaga Uno said that he sympathizes with the 
TikTok user, Park Sandiaga, claimed that he communicated with local government associations and businesses in West Nusa Tenggara to better educate some locals on the proper treatment of tourists in hopes to put an end to the catcalling quandary. So there was one video and he reacted to it. Well, apparently she is a, an influencer, an Indonesian influencer. And so I guess she's got some pull because he hopped on that one right away. And she would have been better off if he didn't notice it because apparently she got some intense feedback. And so she had to come out with a long public apology. And that is it for today. Just an update about the story of the young lady who posted a complaint about Gilly Trawangan and being harassed uh, verbally by people there and then had to apologize and Park San Diego Uno got involved in it. Well, she apparently is being sued by some people in Gilly Trawangan for defamation. And she is also, I guess, gathering evidence to show that she was, in fact, harassed. And so this is a story that has been spreading and getting bigger and popping up all over in local news sources. So keep an eye on that and see how that one turns out. Okay, it is Friday. I've got to go get take care of my sick granddaughter still sick. Uh, don't forget, if you like cooking videos, my wife's cooking videos are up here in her channel. And hopefully I will have a couple of Singaraja snippet videos coming out soon. One on the ceremony, or if I can get to that this weekend, and the other a little short restaurant review in case you happen to be in Singaraja and you want to try a really good local restaurant. Thanks for viewing. Be kind to someone today. Stay safe and have a great weekend. I will see you on Monday.